Right, here we are, Stores Wood, with a, a very, very, very talented man, the artist Pete McKee, a very well-known Sheffield artist, probably the best-known Sheffield artist. Uh, and we're here really to talk about the business of art and, mm -hmm. and how that works. And I'm n definitely not an interviewer, so this isn't going to be professional. Uh, and it, I'm very aware of how on the face of it how well you're doing and how because obviously you're in a band as well yeah uh which is again art um and it, it just interests me how you sort of got going with art what made you decide to be an artist uh well should i call you stone or should i call you andrew which one shall we you with? choose all right then i'll go andrew then yeah for now so uh not necessity and desire the, the two things that got me into art. One is, it was the only thing I could possibly do, in a sense, because I, I, I went to school and I did my exams, they weren't necessarily brilliant results. And I always wanted to be creative. The only thing that I ever got praise for was my art. So right. that's what I wanted to be as an artist, but predominantly I wanted to be a musician, I wanted to be in bands. And so I gave that a, a crack when I was 16 to about 22. Right. But nothing transpired from that so then I had to go to plan B yeah. which now has turned into plan A which was to be an artist but I started off being a cartoonist um, because that was my first real passion I, did, I, I didn't study art so therefore painting seemed like a, a, a bridge too far yeah. whereas an ink pen, pencil and a rubber yeah. that's all I needed and a piece of A4 paper and the imagination and you don't need any job interview to be a cartoonist. You just simply send your work off and all you need is someone to, to share the same sense of humour. Yeah. So for like 15, 20 years I was doing that, trying to find people with the same sense of humour that were willing to pay to publish yeah. my work. Yeah. And it worked on A level. I still had to work at the same time as selling my work. Yeah. So it gave an income that was just uh, needed popping up. Yeah. Uh, I've worked in various jobs while being a cartoonist, so uh, I worked in record stores, then I worked um, as a postman, right. and then I worked uh, in home shopping at Tesco's, and I did, I did, I was a postman for five years, and I worked at Tesco's for five years. Right. While at Tesco's, in that five years, uh, my financial situation was getting more and more perilous, it was getting more and more in debt, I was using um, sort of debt management companies and signing checks and signing checks each week and stuff like that so in a real real bad situation and I had to find a way out of that and so I turned to actual fine art rather than cartoon art because I thought if I could sell a painting for a couple hundred quid rather than uh, a piece of art for 75 a cartoon for 75 quid or, yeah. or hoping I could have maybe have a more of a stable chance it was a bit more a necessity that turned my cartoon work into fine art yeah but i had to find a style that would suit that where i could actually paint without having any training uh and so readapting a, a particular style of cartooning into a fine art piece worked and finding the narrative that was um that people could connect with and therefore made it desirable was the next step and so uh, looking back into my nostalgia into into my past my childhood it was a very much a shared experience with a lot of people yeah absolutely so if i were doing paintings of little kids sat outside pubs waiting for their dads or the parents uh, and uh, play football on the backfield they, they were they were things that people could associate with themselves yeah and so it made my work sellable yeah and after a short uh, a very short time of um while working at tesco's after about a year of starting that within the fifth year of Tesco's, by the fifth year of Tesco's I was packing it in and saying I'm a full time artist now because I was selling my work enough yeah. to supplement both incomes so yeah. I came from cartooning and from uh, working at Tesco's. That's it's incredible because our art is so different and I'm not claiming to be you but we've got such parallel yeah. connections you know you've done exactly the same as me. <laughs> I've not been a postman but we've done no. exactly the same no. thing to yeah. be an artist. It's Fantastic. Well, the thing is, no one, no one plunks you in the middle of a field and says, "You are now an artist that sells work for two thousand pounds." No, that's absolutely a lot true, of hard yeah. work goes before you get to any point yeah. near that, and it, it's a lot of schlepping and it's a lot of doing other jobs while you while you're building a uh, a foundation. 
uh, a fan base or yeah. people yeah. an awareness so you, you, you don't overnight unless obviously you're Damien Hurst and you've, uh, <laughs> yeah. and you've, you've, you've come a, a very uh, respectable art college and then a millionaire starts <laughs> buying your work on cheap and then makes you famous yeah that, that's so very that's true. that's one way of getting into it I if guess... you do the hard work is doing what we do well we're Yorkshire artists <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Right, if yeah. it's not hard I don't want to do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I've got to admit, I absolutely love your work because it does oh, exactly you. what you say. It's that, it's that nostalgia. You, you instantly connect with it. Yeah. You, you, you see, they, they sat on the seafront with the scarves on, and that's yeah. my grandma when she went on holiday with. Yeah. My grandma was that. Yeah. There. So it's instant connection. Well, that's yeah. right. And I think it's the same with your work. You, you are in tune with the people that buy your work, in tune with your lifestyle. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah, I think that's absolutely true because although we are artists but with different media, different aspects. And yeah. I, I am sort of keyed into this nature thing and I think yeah. people respect what I do and they, they understand what I do and I think yeah. that's it's finding your audience. It is exactly that's what it is and it's whether it's someone who wants a picture of an old lady eating an ice cream or it's someone who wants a, a piece of work that connects with a, a spiritual side. Yeah. Uh, when it comes, comes to nature or uh, or a belief in that respect, uh, then then you, you're, that's the audience that you're, you're looking for because it's what you understand and know. And so whenever you do a piece of work, it's genuine. Yeah, that's, uh, that's every true. Uh, every chip of a, a rock is, is a genuine uh, strike. It, it's a blow. A, it's sustainable, and it comes from yeah, the heart. And, yeah, and my work comes from my heart. Yeah. I'm so proud of my upbringing on a council yeah, I, I, but you can see that yeah, yeah that's it so you, there's no there's no shame in selling your work or no. anything there's no there's well, no you're not, doubt you're not, there's truthful. no pretense that's it it's, that's it's, right yeah i'm not truth. i'm not deliberately painting stuff to sell i'm painting stuff to please me and then if it yeah. sells it's it's a boon ah, that that makes you feel so good well it? that's it it's fulfilling it's, yeah. uh, it's good for the soul i mean there are artists and I, i'm not going to criticize them at all who find a path that they think it's commercial and it's purely commercial and like for instance illustrating it is very much that you are at the mercy of the person that's going to buy your work to then put in print yeah so you have to you have to then till that line you have to do paint and draw to order you find a creative way of doing that you find a way that your your thought process and your creativity can express itself within a strict deadline uh, a strict um, um not deadline what's the word um Theme. It's a better word than that, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, so but you, they, they, you have to find your own creativity through that, and some people find that uh, inspiring. Yeah. To have a have a, have that pressure, and motivating. Have you any thought? This I don't. I'm not trying to be uh, down on any other artist, but you you are very successful now. Uh, and I have noticed there are other artists trying to climb on yeah. your uh, shoelaces. Yeah, the, 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 I think we, when people see my style, I think it's an easy, 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 uh, easy take, an easy kind of uh, way in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it's kind of like this, this, this the honesty that sh shows. Well, that, that's that's that, the thing. That's what I capture from it. They can use your palette, but they can't use your imagination. That's so right, they, yeah, that's so they capture yeah. the colours, but they don't yeah. capture your your yeah. emotion and your yeah. uh, thing into it. I think what, what one of the mistakes some, some people make is they assume that I do everything on a computer, but it's all I'm painting. Yeah. That gives it a different life force Absolutely, than yeah. uh, doing a digital version of something. Yeah. Because that makes it, that's flat and hollow. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, walking around your beautiful woods and your your sculptural uh, uh, your sculptures um, is how you you follow form with what you've got in front of you. And when I re when I started early days, I used to go to B and Q and get off cuts. Yeah, I, I, I'm like you. You expect borrow and steal at first, isn't it? And well, you, that's you, that's you've got secret. the work yeah. with what you've got in front of you. Absolutely. And so I went to used to go to B and Q and buy the, all the paints that nobody else nobody else wanted, so they were cheap. Uh, so emotion pain and uh, all the off-cut bits of MDF that nobody wanted. So they were all different sizes and shapes. So sometimes I'd have a, a, a piece of wood that was sort of uh, 10 inches high or 10 inches one way and, and 24 inches another. Yeah. 
And what, what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to turn into a seascape or Absolutely, something, a landscape. Yeah, yeah. But I, that's where where I was at with that. And every sort of piece of wood uh, offered a different kind of yeah. a solution and an alternative to find it, a painting out of it. It's clever that, isn't it? Because you you've not actually got a formula. You you've not got a, a piece of wood 12 by 12. You've got a piece of wood that's coming that you don't even know. Yeah. And you would adapt to that piece of wood, which gives you this. This ability to create anything—you're not—you're not just walking down a tunnel. Well, that's, it's, it's a great one to—it's to, to, a—it's a great exercise for an artist, isn't it? Yeah. To, to to find art within whatever they've got in front of them. Yeah. That, that's a great thing. I, now I'm a bit more formulated, and I—I I get my sizes cut to oh, order. Yeah. Because if I if I need 24 pieces of pay, uh, board before I start an exhibition, I need to get them done. Absolutely. I, I don't have the luxury now of pondering down it, being curious no, what they've got on I, I agree, but what I'm saying is it's sort yeah. of it it's taught you from an early age about flexibility, really. I yeah, guess. from an, definitely in this early stages that career, because at that point, as I said earlier, that when I started painting, I was skin skin. Yeah, I didn't so know that feeling, I, Yeah, so everything had to be done for now. Yeah. And that's why emotion paint was the stuff, and that's why MDF offcuts was the stuff. And I didn't frame anything. I no. couldn't afford to put the frames on. So my first ever exhibition was in a pub. And the reason for that one is I, I, um, I didn't know about going into art galleries, and I don't find art galleries that particularly appealing to go into. Yeah, I mean... And so I thought my audience, I assumed the audience I was directing at would be thinking it's exactly the same. And the best place the most people would be going to would be a pub. So the first exhibition was in a boozer, because more people would be in a boozer than they would be in an art gallery. And uh, yeah, so everything was unframed. It was varnished, that was something I did remember to do. And uh, yeah, so so that was it. It was just picture hooks on the back, nailed onto a wall, piece of string. And that's not changed much from that day, really, yeah. apart from the fact my wood's cut to size and I do get them framed now. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, because I was a dry stone waller for a quite a few years. Well, that's a noble, noble career, though, that isn't <laughs> yeah. it? It's gorgeous. Well, that's how I got stone faced, because... Uh... Not because you're good looks. <laughs> <laughs> no, chiseled looks, yeah. <laughs> no, because um, I, all the walls I took down, all these walls have been up hundreds of years, and, and they sort of fall down, but all the walls that I ever rebuilt, I never found a signature of anybody. Right. And I, I'm, I don't know whether it's arrogance, but I thought, well, I want to sign my walls. So, yeah. So I went home one day and I carved a, a stone face and I'd never carved stone at that point. I carved oh, right. a stone face into a stone and put it in the wall. And that is how I became stone face. Oh, wow. But about the materials, I, I used to find all these stones that were really horrible and you couldn't build back in. So I used to chuck them in back at Land Rover, bring them back to where I was working. And that, they're the things I used to carve. Yeah. And so I used to take the carvings from from, the, from my workshop to garden centres and sell because that's how I started yeah, selling yeah, in garden centres. Yeah, it's an ideal market. So there, isn't it? We, we, these parallels between us are just <laughs> so incredible. Yeah. With different formulas, but yeah. totally the same. That's it, and I think our story will be very similar to a lot of artists. If any I, I artists agree. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll understand where we're going from with this, is because that's how do you sell if you don't if you never sold before? You've got to sort of work out work it out. That's you? it. Find you, that market. You, and, and that's part of what I try and do now. I try. We have open days and things here. And, and we try and get young artists right. here selling their work. That's good. We're actually exposing young artists to our audience. Brilliant. Uh, and, and it's just so important. I, it was so difficult. And it sounds though like you've been in exactly the same place. It was just so difficult for us, for me, as an artist to get started mm. and I, I just think if you can just help someone make that yeah. first step yeah then you've not done a bad day's work have you now it's an interesting one actually it's um joe scarborough another sheffield artist a beautiful beautiful artist yeah. well he's a really man. good friend he's, of mine yeah well he's he actually said something to me very early on because like uh, i wanted to start and i had no idea and no uh, um, <coughs> One, one thing that artists are are, are, are terrible business people Absolutely. for a start, because you're an artist, you're not a businessman, no, otherwise yeah. you'd be working in finance yeah. if you were a, a good business head, not an artist. So you're always looking for advice, you're always looking for help, and you're looking for confidence. 
about what to do. Yeah. And it's an interesting thing is because you get, ask people to come down and see your work and I put my work on walls and ask people to come and see me. And the one thing you do actually need is ego. Yeah. Even though you're, un, you're, we're all cringing inside thinking we're all, all self, uh, you know, we're, we're insular people yeah. and we're talking to people and we're, we're really embarrassed and stuff and shy. When, when, there's a piece of it that isn't, and that's the really important piece, is this little piece of ego that says, actually, what I've done, I'm really proud of. Not only do I want you to come and see it, I want you to buy it. That's absolutely <laughs> yeah. true, yeah. And we, we, we keep that hidden down, thinking that we don't have an ego, but we really do. Yeah, I agree. And if you didn't have that ego, you would be just some, it'd be all in your bedroom. Yeah. Your bed would be 40 foot high. You're <laughs> still carving under it. But there's something inside you, this desire, that you feel proud of what you do and you feel that it's what you want to do and if you don't sell it then you're going to be uh, looking in vain for something to eat. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree because that is what that is what Stoneface was to me, That it was that mask that I could hide behind yeah. and show people that yes I am this artist and yes I do want to sell. Yeah. Whereas like the enemy is going oh I don't want to do this. <laughs> but now my son, my son sort of took me taking me from behind that mask yeah. and, and we've now started selling my work as Andrew Vickers artist. Yep. So we still we still are the business is still Stoneface created but yeah. now I'm actually showing myself yeah. as Andrew Vickers artist. Yeah we've got a very good connection in that respect because both my sons work for me and, and do that side of the thing that I find very difficult. Yeah. And uh, not only is it just a time management thing, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, on a, it's a dealing business level. Even on the micro side of it, where it's answering emails and stuff. Oh, absolutely. And telephone calls. Yeah. Thomas's life is yeah. to cope with, with this business. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it's incredible. I could not exist without Thomas yeah. doing what... They, they are nothing, me. nothing at all. Yeah, but for my, if it wasn't for my son's help, you know, I'd, I'd still just simply be doing a few exhibitions in a boozer. That's what Every now and again. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of... And another interesting thing about all that is, is, I don't know how you are, but if I have that in my head I want to do some work, I can't be disturbed about that. If I'm disturbed for one bit, then that's all gone. Yeah. I can't, I have to wait till the next day to go again. I'm exactly like that, because me and Thomas will talk in the morning and I'm, I'm wanting to get on with this sculpture and I, I'm abrupt sometimes. I just have to say to him, Thomas, you need to stop talking. I'm thinking of this work. <laughs> And I can't do both, and, no. that, and that's exactly yeah, how I am. That's it. And it's it's probably it's not being rude. I just have to not get anybody else's input no, into just, my world. There's this point. little uh, pixie or whatever you want to call it. This, this little thing inside you that's buzzing around. Yeah. And it's saying like, I'm moving your arms now. I want yeah. you to do something. That's absolutely crazy. It, yeah. And suddenly, if you've got to go to the shops and get four <laughs> pints of milk, it goes to bed. It's gone. Yeah. yeah, done for <laughs> yeah you're not going to talk to me. I'm <laughs> playing. Not yeah. playing. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's crazy that we, I mean, I've spoke to you a few times, but it's crazy that we've had this conversation because mm. it's like we've walked this path side by side. Absolutely, yeah, it's been beautiful. It's yeah. been a great conversation. Loved it. it. It's fantastic, and I'm really proud that you've come down here, no, so I thank you. It every minute. I mean, it's really important for artists to speak to other artists. Absolutely, and I'm going to tell you one of my, uh, I, I'm not expecting you to do anything, but... One of the things I always wanted you to do was a picture of a, a man sculpted as stone. All right, okay, then put that in my memory bag. Yeah. Then. <laughs> right, you can sculpt to one of well, me with a boat with no eyes and a big nose. Then. Well, I'll do it. It's not a problem. I love doing abstract work. So yeah, bro. We'll do a swap. <laughs> anyway, thank you so uh, much, Pete. Beautiful. Been brilliant. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Eric's no, loved you uh, once too. Thank you, Eric. You've been a star. Cheers.